Hey everybody, so real quick, uh, we're gonna do just a little, another filler episode stuff uh, with Pillars of Eternity this time, since I have lost some of the Coder episodes, and I don't have time to go back and replay them, so I got this new game, Pillars of Eternity, and um, it was gifted to me kindly by one of the regular Twitch viewers, and so I figured I'd give it a go, um, and I've really enjoyed it, so I thought I would have it as just like a, for fun, um, filler, quick look type thing at the original Pillars of Eternity, not the newest Pillars of Eternity 2. Um, but so far it's been really fun, so I hope you guys enjoy it. I will keep uploading Horizon Zero Dawn, hopefully, uh, while this is going, and we'll see how we do, well, what games we're playing after I get back from work again. But I hope you all have a good week, and I will see you in a minute. It's the game that Caillou gifted me. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna give a look. We're gonna check out... Pillars of Eternity. So, uh, here goes. It's my first time opening it. You, you, you thought I lost my nut like the one in Ice Age? Oh! Oh, Kayu Kai! Obsidian, that's who makes it. Um, I did, um, take a long time getting food. I couldn't decide what I wanted to get, but I finally decided. All right, so Caillou got me the definitive edition. Let me see! Yay! Oh my gosh, Arcanthus, Arcanthus. You're at work. All right, I need to freaking follow you. Every time you you linked up your your stream in our group chat, I was like I couldn't I couldn't get to Twitch because I didn't have a good enough service to to get to it. <laughs> okay, so this is like um the definitive edition or something, uh the the like game of the year edition of Pillars of Eternity. So I think I've got all the stuff all the stuffs. Ooh, yeah, use Lurk. There's action, laughter, and harass, giggling. <laughs> Biggest difference. Biggest challenge yet. Size difference. <laughs> rain. <laughs> you, rain, you should look into becoming a documentary person. Yeah, I can't. This is nerd. Piggy! Ashley, hi! I was going to email you the other day. I, I I was gonna email you to see how you were doing because I was pretty sure school like is all done right like like the, if I, that <laughs> how is it going Ashley it has been so long it's so good to see you all after last year <gasps> Levin Z you're actually friends with with Mezer that's a it's a double edged sword my friend. <laughs> What happened last stream? We romanced Iron Bull, Grammy. <laughs> we romanced Iron Bull. It's actually up on YouTube, and it should also be in the VODs and Twitch still if you're interested. Ashley, it is so free. I'm gonna cry, Ashley. I was gonna email you and be like, oh, yeah, no, I was gonna email you because, yeah, because school's out. Uh, I'm also eating. Okay, get back with the unique soulbound items from the sequel are available here. New portraits are available. Um, uh, maybe no, no telemetry right now. I did. I also died from being up too late. I got about two hours of sleep before I had to drive for like ten hours. It was great. Wow, Ashley. Been a hot minute, I am sure. You have work and you're getting a promotion! You're growing up, Ashley! Winfred! Winfred! Winfred? Winfred! Sup, how's it going? <laughs> Welcome. Uh, if you're here to watch uh, Pillars of Eternity, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm literally playing this because it was gifted to me because I wanted to play it. The White March is a DLC thing? Well, isn't that, um... So it's not the actual game? Uh, 
But like, so it's not like just included in the game? Uh... Okay, so it's the actual game, but it's the White March update, right? Congrats, Ashley! We've got 50 bits! <laughs> Thank you, Larry, for the 50 bits! Uh, for Ashley! <laughs> Alright. Uh, easy difficulty requires minimal micromanagement and easily forgives mistakes in combat. It is strongly recommended for those who are new or recently returned. Click! <laughs> oh, let's see! I'm so excited! Grammy, you know more what? My dear, what? <laughs> so cool you're almost at the same progress so just starting <laughs> Ashley okay you're gonna be a crew trainer and once you're 18 you can be manager oh my gosh you get to take classes god likes are cool oh I'm so excited Grammy I'm so excited god likes ah ah I'm so excited to play this game oh you okay I was you trying to say, Caillou. I thought you were like, no more, Grammy. The path on a starless night, their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim light Story time, is kids. only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Bay, <laughs> you among them, <laughs> where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating Is this and Matt Mercer? and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the okay. trunk of a fallen tree I can fix that. the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. Okay, I just turned. Oh. Oops, that was wrong. Okay, turn me back down, and now I'm gonna turn the game volume up. Okay. Um, when he starts talking again, let me know. I can also turn myself down a little bit. So you're three hours in, okay, Winfried? And all the NPCs have been like, "Damn, I wish I was romanceable." <laughs> right? The accents, yeah. Um. Oh shoot, I forgot. Oh well. Um, I was gonna... I'm, I'm maybe gonna put this up on YouTube at some point, so I meant to start recording it, but I forgot to do that. I will press done. I'm sorry, Grammy. I will. I'm, I'm trying to... I was trying to do something else really quick. I was trying to mess with volume. You want... Replay? You want... I guess I can replay. Alright, did you not hear it? Five wagons Here. broke blindly Listen for to the Matt path Mercer on a starless again. night. Their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right I already course. heard it. You didn't hear it. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. Okay, how's the volume on this now, though? Actually, this is a good but time the to test the volume. the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint. Again, again. Know. Again. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier. How's the volume compared Bale, to my voice and stuff? Them, this is my normal talking voice. Where a local lord has voice. offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. It's okay. You have All taken right. suddenly ill, Volume sweating prime. and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan Whoop master. Done. All right, all right, good, Larry, good. Thank you, thank you. <gasps> She's beautiful. A woman's role in Europe is largely dependent on where she's from. In the Adir Empire, Valayan Republics, and the Direwood, women occupy many domestic educational and organizational roles. They are the primary hunters, soldiers, and leaders of the tribes. And all right, we're going to be a Nastak, Nastitik, Nastitak, from Eric Glanfath and Extamtal. Women and men have more fluid social roles. In all societies, there are exceptions to the rule. Women can be found under a wide variety of stations and perfections. We can see what the men look like too. 
Anyway, this might go on YouTube someday, so everybody say hi to YouTube. <laughs> Still do character creation done! <laughs> she's beautiful! <laughs> no joke, she's really pretty. You gonna be okay? Wow, the men look scary. His hair is uh, pretty crazy. Okay, so I'm gonna be a woman. Let's see. How do, I'm clicking on things and it's not working. Oh. Oh, next. You have to choose the gender first. Oh, I see. Oh, wow. A whole party of. A lemon party, Kappa! Human, commonly called folk, are the most common race in the Direwood, the Ader Empire, Old Velia, and the Velian Republic, so not as large as the towering Omoa. Humans are known for their strength and willpower. A lemon, Aumauma. Auma, woo! The mighty Auma, Au. Almawa are the largest of the kith races and are commonly found in or near oceans. Though not truly aquatic, they have an affinity for water and many of the civilizations such as Ratau Rautai are based on naval dominance. They are known for their unparalleled strength. That's cool! A lemon party! <laughs> Don't Google that! It's a wholesome good time! I'm sure it is! I'm sure it is! <laughs> Oh, yeah. I know what lemon means in fan fiction, so I'm already on the right track, and I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Don't need to Google it. <laughs> Dwarf. Oh, my gosh. She looks so cool. Okay, I really love her hair. By virtue of land covered and number of colonies settled, the dwarves are the most well-traveled race in the world. They are commonly found in the Direwood, the Villain Republics, and almost any colonized land. Dwarves are known for their great strength and tenacity. So they have the two might, but a minus one in dexterity, but a plus one to constitution. Ooh. Uh, sometimes you used to check withstand pain or endure physical taxing ordeal. Might. Okay. There's sub races? Grammy, what is this? Christmas? I love sub races. <laughs> There's too many choices. Um, elf. Okay, she's pretty. Elves are the dominant race in ER Glanfath. Ooh. <gasps> oh, look! We can, like, hover! No, 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 Lemon Z. I'm actually really leaning. At this point, I like the idea of being Almawa because I really like oceans, too. Okay, so Ir Glanfath is a territory comprised of the forest southeast of the Bale River, populated by indig populated indigenously by a group of loosely affiliated tribes, collectively known as the Glanfathans, governed by a council of six most powerful tribes, uh, home to a number of ruined Eng Enguithan sites, which Glanfathans... Who, who names these things? Like, who has the time to make these tongue-twisting names? which the Glanfathans hold sacred. The ruins have been at the center of a number of large-scale conflicts, Darwoodian con colonists, Darwoodan colonists, whose settlements often encroach on Glanfathan territory and who frequently seek to plunder the ruins for their relics. Let's murder them all! Murder! Kayuk, you're learning! Cause you don't, cause I, I need to play this game because otherwise Kayuk's not gonna know what's going on when he plays. <laughs> Darwood is a colonial nation founded by settlers from the Aider Empire. Following a series of conflicts with the Aider, this territory became independent in 2672 and is now ruled by a duck. <laughs> is that Duke? Who is elected by seven earls that oversee its earldoms. I, you should hear his name. Yeah, no, seriously. His I'm, critical role in critical role, he's, he's ultra creative. We're not gonna be an elf! You, we're not gonna be an elf when we could be something that we've never been before in our lives! Look, she's so cute! Uh, what's a kith? I don't know what a kith is. Orleans are the smallest of the kith races. We could be an elf in any game ever, but this game has like, a godlike, a mawa, Orlin, like I've never played that before. Oh, I know, Grammy. Like, even the names that Matt Mercer makes up, I can't believe he remembers them. 
There's a furry one? Woo! Well, how do you pick a subclass? Is that just, is that the next button? Orleans are the smallest of the kith races, though many cultures don't consider them to be civilized at all. Also notable for their large ears, two-toned skin, and hirsute bodies. Orleans are commonly found in ear, blah, 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 blah. They are known for their mental intensity and sharp senses. Okay. She'd be cool. <laughs> this game, we're gonna be an epic furry. <laughs> okay, but look at my options. What options? What options? I don't. I, yeah, yeah. What do you mean options? Culture? Where's my options? I have a voice button. Godlike. Whoa! <laughs> Okay, I didn't want to be a godlike because I figured they'd be like the one that everybody picked, but holy cow, they look cool. The godlike are the children of the kith, civilized races, who have been blessed with physical aspects associated with the gods, though some do not consider it a blessing. These aspects may take many forms and often come with mystical powers. Ab aberrant head shapes are... I'm never sure if I say that right. Aberrant? Ab aberrant? Aberrant head shapes are typical... And godlike are unable to wear protective headgear as it is near impossible to find anything that fits. Because of their unusual nature and their inability to reproduce, godlike are often viewed with fear and wonder. Uh, oh, if I go next, they'll go... Okay, check out all the sub-races. If it's the Shape of Water monster, then we're gonna be her for sure. Because the Shape of Water monster was, like, the hottest thing in 2018. It's a moon godlike? So there's, like... Okay, hang on. Okay, okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here's the sub races. Okay, so for humans, we have the meadow folk. Uh, meadow folk traditionally live at the edges of elven forests, working in the open plains, hence their name. Most humans in the dire world are Theoretan. Uh, fighting spirit. Once per encounter, five seconds after being, I thought it said reproduced. <laughs> being reproduced, below 57% of endurance. Folk temporarily gain bonuses to accuracy and damage. I'm dead. Let squirrel no no yeah he did Lemonzy I see what you say I see what you're saying and 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 I I I I don't I I know hang on dang it oh my gosh rain thank you for the fifty dollar donation what are you was it, did I read that right or am I wrong Ray oh my gosh I just got the notification to pop up on my Streamlabs. Wow! Wow! Rain, $50! Holy cow, thank you. I don't have to scavenge for dinner now. That is a lot. Thank you so much. Wow. Is it payday in the military? You should have made a flask of coffee, Larry, because we are going to be here a while. <laughs> Go now. <laughs> okay. Ocean folk. Originated the equator. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Yep. Savannah. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're definitely not gonna be a human. Okay. I. It's just a rain. It's a lot of money. Fifty dollars is a lot of money. So thank you. I really appreciate. It's the usual bribe money. Just, just slipping me fifty bucks under the the freaking digital the digital table. Fifty bucks is a lot, man. I could buy almost a whole video game with that. Okay, I'm gonna eat this. So I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read the description of the Almawa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Armed to the teeth. All island now mile get an additional weapon set. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Look at her hair. Her hair is so cool. This is the shape of water, monster. This is the shape of water, monster. And we're gonna, we're gonna be in love. We're gonna fall in love. Ashley, uh, you do the donate by clicking on that picture that I, uh, that, that you made me that one time. Or you could do that, what Rain just linked. I pay, some people pay for Netflix, I pay for a squirrel in its natural habitat. This is me in my natural habitat, I couldn't be happier. 
It's the the picture that Ashley that Ashley made, but I don't know if you can see it. Uh, if you're on mobile, you might not be able to see it. Ooh, they're warlike. Um. Towering physique. You forgot you made that? <laughs> it has been a while. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, you're happy I'm happy with the game so far? Well, I haven't even gotten anywhere, but yes. <laughs> I am super stoked. Okay, they have game bonuses to defend against prone and stun effects. Okay, oh my gosh, she's so cool. Lemon Z, where are you? Lemon Z, look. Okay, dwarf. We have mountain dwarf and boreal. A tree dwarf? Really? Well, they share the rocky tundra, snow covered forest with migratory pale elves and the coast hugging ships of Amroa. They share a love of exploration. Oh, I like that. This, that, that one has the biggest chesticles! <laughs> the Almala? I think you're right. <laughs> uh, bribe, you meant extortion, uh, coder. <laughs> Mountain door. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hunter's Instincts. They gain a plus 15 accuracy against any creature of the wild or primordial type. Colony, bird, bird. Uh, they frequently subjugated the Aptapo, Ap have always fought directly back, fought back, directly fought back threats posed by larger kids. Ha Hale and Hardy, Mountain Dwarfs is a bonus to defend against poison and disease attacks. Uh, it's more often from a spell. Okay. Uh, we have different types of elves, the Wood Elf and the Pale Elf. Whoa. You can have a god like with the body type of the Amawa. Okie dokie then. We might have to do that. <laughs> it's unclear exactly how long ago the Pale Elves, Glam Felon, came to the southern polar regions of the world, but they lived there for 12,000 years based on their continuous contact with the Amawa traders. <laughs> Vampire! But you're right, Grammy. They appear to be among the most stationary ethnic groups in the known world, migrating from the polar region but suddenly venturing far north. They are rare in all northern lands, and most people consider them exotic if they have seen one at all. Elemental Endurance. Then we have Wood Elf. Against any enemy that's more than four meters away, Wood Elves gain a bonus to accuracy, deflection, and reflex. Okay. Burr, burr, do we? Have migrated south of the forests of the continent, now covering all the way to the south of the equator. They are believed to have migrated across the sea to Ir Glanfath. Wood elves from Ader are culturally different from those in Ira Glenfeth and consider them themselves a wholly different group. Orlan! I kinda like the Orlan, I'm gonna be, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Ashley, 75 is a freaking lot. Um, so please don't. <laughs> you are you're saving up for for your life. But Thank you, and I'm glad your bank account said no. <laughs> you didn't have to like, you couldn't even get to like the numbers. All it said was no, just on the screen, no. Uh, Penny, oh Penny, I bet you Penny's a good one. I haven't romanced Penny yet. I. I saw that Lemon Z about the new Stardew update. Oh no! They're found as slaves? They continue to live in the Direwood as indentured servants. Minor threat when attacking any target that's also targeted by a teammate. Hearth Orlins convert some of their hits into crits. Wild Orlin! Whoa! They look really different. They are the original Orlans who live in the deep forests and have and jungles between the tropics. While they have only been significantly separated from Hearth Orlans for a thousand years, a few genetic differences have appeared rapidly, most notably a lack of facial hair in the Hearth Orland branch. Wild Orlans are common in the deep ranges of Ir Glanfath, unlike their Hearth Orland brethren, they're not often seen in. Ooh, what's this one? 
neighbor to the north, as a nation firmly rooted in its Eothesian faith, a fervor that took hold during the events of the Saints War and remains even after the apparent death of Eothus. She does, doesn't she? She looks like our bull rider. But they were talking for <laughs> Don't overshadow my moment of glory. Yeah, Rain, Rain hack your bank account real quick. And said no. <clears throat> I thought ducking was hilarious, Lemons. I thought you did it on purpose, so don't worry about it. <laughs> a mercantile pattern former colony of a larger, more ancient nation, Ovalia, the public slide of the south of Darwood, and ruled by a duck elected by the Consagula Asiraki. Council of 14 ducks, including its five most prominent, the Duck Bells! <laughs> I can't take it seriously. Hmm. Oh, oh, so Penny definitely has a Cinderella vibe going on. To. Okay, okay. So they gain a bonus on that. Godlike, let's see. Ooh, death godlike! Ooh! Oh my gosh, she's so scary looking! Ah, she looks like the thing from The Witcher. Um, death godlike are the most distrusted of their kind. Strange growths cover their eyes, or in some cases, an entire face, giving them a sinister appearance. The growths are transparent, but the godlike but opaque from the outside, hiding their features. Death godlike are commonly killed at birth, because many cultures consider them to be harbingers of doom. Ah, oh, Darth Shape of Water Monster, that's exactly what it is. Man, I want to be a death godlike. Look at that! She looks like so freaky, but she looks like she'd be really pretty, but also really, really freaky. When a death god like attack an enemy with 25% less endurance, their damage is increased. Fire god like! Whoa! The bodies of fire god like often resemble hot metal, burnt wood, or stone, with the harmless flames that air up from the cracks in their skin. Fire godlike are objects of both reverence and fear in the Dead Fire Archipelago. Many locals believe they have the power to awaken volcanoes, or that killing one will cause the volcano to awake awaken. And the Direwood Fire Godlike are often seen as a blessing of Magran, goddess of war and fire. So there's not like a specific tribe of godlikes like that oh, cause they can't attack because they can't reproduce. They just are like they're just born, right? They're just like born. So, like, that's why the death ones are often killed, because, like, they're just born to, like, one of the other races. Battle Forge! They glow like metal and forge, gaining damage reduction and doing a small amount of fire damage. Moon Godlike is really... Stonesmith! Hey there! Four months! Oh my gosh, Stonesmith. Hello, hello! Welcome back, Stone Smith, and thank you for the four month subscription! <laughs> that is so long. I can't believe I've been able to have this for so long. Moon godlike are the most tolerated of the godlike, while their skin tone and large moon like growth on their foreheads appear strange to some. Their appearance is generally considered more palatable by the other kith. More palatable. Okay. Steelers have many beliefs about moon godlike and their propensity to bring luck, though there is little agreement as to what kind of luck they tend to bring. Silver Tide. Every encounter, when reduced below 75, blah blah, moon godlike generate waves of healing moonlight that restore endurance to them and their allies. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, Kentis! Thank you for lurking still, my man. It's good. To, just letting us know. Just letting us know that you're still lurking. I appreciate that. I hope you're doing well. I haven't gotten anywhere. Yeah, Stone Smith, new game. This is Pillars of Eternity. We have nature. Ooh, oh, look at the cute flowers in her hair. They appear to be a fusion of human and animal features, often covered by plants, monster, fungi. This led to the common stigma that they are diseased, and many are killed at birth because of it. Many Druidic orders have a keen interest in nature, God, like. Because of their general curiosity as to how souls occupy animals, plants, and stones. You love the nature look, Kayuk? It is a really nice look. I would go with Death Godlike if I didn't promise that we were going to make a pretty lady. If you can't see her eyes, it's kind of hard to say that she's pretty or not. 
Um, while spring of life grants a bonus to might, constitution, and dexterity when endurance is below 50%. So I like the moon. I like the moon one. I also like the death one. Um, I also like the ore one, actually. I really like... I could be either one of them, and I like the Aomawa. Is it there a squirrel? Ah, that, that would probably be the wild Orlan, yes. I really do like the Almawa. Look, Lemonzy, did you see her? You don't like mood? It's frills frighten you, but we can change that, I think. I think we can change the frills. I kind of like the Almawa. Like, she definitely looks 100% like the, like the shape of water. Yeah, it's a classic style RPG, Stonesmith. Yeah, it's like uh, one of the top down, like old school RPGs. Uh, okay, all right. Um, okay, let's pick a let's pick a let's pick a race. We're gonna be Almala, Orlan, or Godlike, and we could be. I think she's super cute, but we could well could we could also mess around with the wild Orlan. Okay, wait. Yeah, okay. You don't get a lot of customization. You vote for the death one or the Amawa or Len Straw Pole. Tiny. Oh, tiny godlike? Can I make a tiny godlike? Yeah, uh, let's make a straw pole. If we can. Green Canary. I don't even know who the green one is. You can make a godlike of any t Oh, the green one would be the nature one. You like the green godlike. Okay. So we have we have two for godlike, one for Amawa. Uh Or the okay, so we actually have Lemon Z sort of has two votes, I guess, because she liked the Death God like too, or the Elmawa. Okay, you're making a straw poll. Okay, while you do that, I'm gonna keep looking at stuff and eat. All right, we'll probably be though. I think the consensus is um, godlike. So I'll take a closer look at those. I do like the moon one. Hmm. I like this bonus too. They generate healing. We have the nature. Death is pretty freaking sweet, even though she's scary looking. I like being death. I like being death incarnate. Fire is cool. You pick Coder. Coder! Raiden picks Coder! Okay. What should we be? Ooh, we have a vote for Orlan. Oh my gosh, it's 50 50 now, you guys. Oh no! Oh wow, it's going fast. Oh my gosh, Orlan's winning. I think that's like all of you, actually. How many, how many are here? I think that's gonna be most of you. It looks like Orlan wins, all right. Sweet, I actually really kind of wanted to be- Oops, see, that's not what I meant. Okay, so female, okay. Uh, Orlan. Okay, so now do we want to be wild or hearth Orlan? I think I want to be a wild Orlan. So hang on. After being- Let's see what their perks are. After being subjected to a, a will attack, 
Wild Orlands temporarily gain a bonus to all defenses. Or when attacking any target that's also being targeted by a teammate, Hearth Orlands convert some of their hits into crits. And the Hearth Orlands are usually slaves. You want to be a wild thing! Oh, I don't mind. I actually, I be, I wanted to be either an Amao or an Orlan, really. But I also wanted to be, you know, like a Godlikes are so cool. But we'll be a wild Orlan. Okay. Wild thing. Yeah, Hearth, Hearth looked like it had a better for the crits for sure. Um, but we'll we'll be a wild thing. Wild Orlan. Seeing the end were essentially elves. They're just furry dragon age elves. Yay. Ooh, a monk. I want to be a monk. Okay, that's absolutely terrifying. She actually looks really... Hang on, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Oh my gosh, they are. They're all furry. That is absolutely terrifying. Oh, that's right, Caillou. We can make more in-game. Uh... So we have, you guys, we have two votes for wild and two votes for hard. Uh, hang on. Uh, what did I do? Okay. Monks belong to a variety of fighting orders that have sprung up in the blah, 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 blah over the past centuries, while many monastic orders can trace their teachings to the enduring founder, Talactic. Individual organizations vary greatly in their focus, morality, and ethics. Common folk respect the incredible discipline of monks, but see them as odd, unpredictable bunch who may not be entirely sane. Even mercenaries. My vote matters too? Yay, Kyu, thank you! Uh, even mercenaries and other adventurers aren't sure what to make of them. Uh, I want to be a monk really bad. Monk class was great in the older RPGs. I, I made a monk recently for D&D that I really want to play. Transcendent Suffering. When monks have no weapons equipped, their unarmed attacks are exceptionally powerful and continue to increase in damage as they gain levels. Wounds as monk are damaged. Their pain generates wounds. Wounds can be used to power many of the monks' special abilities. Stealth, Athletics, Survival... Wow. Okay. Oh, I will look at all of them. Survival allows characters to choose from a variety of long-term bonuses each time they camp. The first six ranks grant the following bonuses. Okay, damage reduction, healing, multiplier, bonus movement. Okay, oh, okay. Oh, okay, you can use them in scripted interactions and involve wilderness challenges or specialized information about nature. Barbarian or ninja. Endurance, plus 14. Oh, so my health and my accuracy and deflection are good, but my endurance is average. Short-term survivability. Damage that is not absorbed by a character's damage reduction goes straight to their endurance and health. Mm hmm hmm Is a cipher in your game? Nice. High damage, high speed! Okay, so we also have, so we have the barbarian. Nah! <laughs> Ooh, I like that. I like the barbarian outfit. Brutes, madman, berserkers. Uh, veracity and fearsome presence on the battlefield. Barbarians have a special, almost religious role in some cultures, but in many places, the indiscipline, fear style of barbarian is simply how warriors conduct themselves. You're a you're you're a biotic, a chanter. In every culture across the aura, there are chanters. Many historians consider chanters to be the most ancient workers of magic. Their hallowed phrases stirring the collective memory of wayward souls around them, compelling them to generate magical effects in a kind of reenactment. <gasps> in some societies, chanters form organized groups of storytellers and researchers. <gasps> but in most part of the world, they are just time honored part of local folk tradition. All chanters can continuously speak chants made up of magical phrases. Phrases produce passive effects and help build the chanter's power until they can use an invocation. Bard. Yeah, it's ba you're right. It's basically a bard. We are in sync. You guys are in sync. Barbarians always have the best crop tops where they have nips out. <laughs> Lore plus two. Ooh, that's cool. Uh, often of occult or esoteric topics outside of conversation and scripted interaction. Lore is used to activate scrolls. Higher lore values allow a character to use higher level scrolls. 
Mechanics. Traps and laws can be a problem free from the toughest adventurers, draining their resources and maiming or killing those who are unfortunate enough. Okay, so this is like a rogue ability. That's pretty cool. Can't see. Yeah. Okay, Cypher. Ooh, she looks cool. A recent discovery in the Eastern Reach Cyphers were once called Brishalguin. That's like Celtic, Gaelic. Mind Hunters. I'm gonna eat this. I'm gonna eat a bite while I look at this, so read amongst yourselves. Oh my gosh! Manipulate somebody's soul? That their soul whip, we can get a soul whip. Drew in. Animus at heart. Drew is tapped into the spiritual power. Blah, blah, blah. I want to be a Nastaki. Spirit shift? What? I can shape shift already? Spider? Nah. Monk? Yeah. Paladin? Meh. Nah, 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 nah. Priest? Um. In contrast to most paladins, priests tend to focus on philosophy, teaching, and relationship of religious organization with common folk. Holy Radiance. Okay. Ranger. Oh my gosh! Levity! That's disgusting! Get Freud out of my chat. <laughs> Imagine being a death shape of water who is also a cypher. You're... That would be... I'm pretty sure we should get a bonus to, like, intimidation if that's the way we did it. I can have an animal friend! Rogue. Mm, I don't even care about rogue. Blah, 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 blah. Wizard. Okay, she looks absolutely ridiculous in this getup. So I want to be a monk, but she looks absolutely ridiculous. Like, please tell me I don't have to wear this. Paladins are fun. You can be evil. Mm. Fanaticism often overrules the chain of command. Okay, hang on, I'm gonna click on, um, Cayuke's link. As long as I don't crash the stream. La 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 la! Striker, support, defender, crowd control. I tend to like to be a tanky character in games like this. Like, I like to protect my my teammates by, like, being a tanky character. I did click on all of them for a second. Let me see monks! I like monks! I'm gonna be a monk! You... Uh, elitist, <laughs> don't be a monk. <laughs> they hit with their fists to lure you into thinking they're cool. I, okay, I didn't skip, I clicked on every single one of them, but I didn't, I don't really care about being a paladin or a rogue or a fighter. Fighters from the front line must organize the culture. Blah, boring, 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 boring element. Fighter help focus endurance and melee. La 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 la. Paladins are religious fanatics. Priests are also religious fanatics, but not as bulky. Rangers have animal companions. Uh, rogues stab people to death. Uh, wizards shoot magic at people. 
We can punch people as a monk! Monk, okay, you know, monks though are hot, okay? Monks are super hot. I can change the outfit with my culture? Yes! Okay, I'm gonna be a monk. Oh. Um, monk abilities cover an array of effects to bolster the effect of their melee attacks. Protect the monk from afflictions or turn the tables on attackers. And rogues can be... <laughs> rogues are... Monks are not religious fanatics! Monks aren't religious fanatics! They're just... They're kind of... They're kind of erratic. Look! Hey, look! Let me Look! They belong to a variety of fighting orders. They have many monastic orders can trace their teachings to the enduring founder. Individual organizations vary greatly in their focus, morality, and ethics. Common folk respect the incredible discipline of monks, but see them as odd, unpredictable bunch of who may not be entirely sane. Does that not sound like me? Even mercenaries and other adventurers aren't sure what to make of them. Okay, but Solus looks like a monk, and he's hot. And, um... Also, I made a monk in D&D, &D and she's really hot. Uh, so, what do we have? The monk's hands become a frenzy blur of attacks, increasing their attack rate for a brief period. Requires one wound, instant speed, 25% attack speed for 10 seconds, torments reach. This ability exploits the shared bonds of universal suffering between all beings. I love it. The initial target... They're more philosophical than religious. Ethics! <laughs> Nerds! They're more philosophical! I love... I love monks. They're cool. The initial target is hit with a powerful blow that does additional crush damage. Enemies in a combine the target suffer crush damage and have their might reduced! Woo! Uh, I think I'm gonna do that one. I don't find Solus attractive. <laughs> Lemon Z, you don't have to find Solus attractive. That just means more for me. Um, which insane punching stone smith? Because I really like the idea of Torment's Reach taking advantage of the universal suffering um, and crushing people. Oh, you can get both? Well, I'm gonna start out with Torment's Reach because, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, okay. Philosophical and punch people. Yeah, well, you gotta philosophically punch people. It's a little bit nicer. Monk. Might represents the character's physical. Oh, okay, we're just gonna go through. Okay. Highly recommended for monk. Wait. Recommended. Oh, okay. So, okay, so it's got a silver star. And then we have... Okay. Perception... Isn't Lemon Z? Yeah, Lemon Z didn't want to be in a in a threesome, so which is totally a hundred percent fine. <laughs> the Paladin has game or religious fanatics. There's a different orders with ethics and causes. So kind of like the monk screaming. Um, Paladin would be cool because they they are they're big tanks with like big shields, and I do like that idea. Constitution and dexterity are higher, and then my, and then whatever you want. You're not a part of, yeah, exactly. No, uh, Lemzy, Lemzy's a strong, independent woman who wants to be in a monogamous relationship. I'm a free lemon. Okay, so dexterity. Oh wow, I have, I have a lot. Um. Oh, what? oh, I see. Okay. Um. I think I want my constitution to be high. Intellect. Contributes to the will, defense, and influences duration. Be useful for mental intimidation, leadership, and convincing performances. Uh. Oh, Ashley, no, wait. I missed it. You must go. You have to wash your work clothes, take a shower, and go to work. Ashley, have fun at work. Do do good. Be happy. It was really good to see you. Concubine. It sounds like porcupine. 
He recommends 16 deck, 16 con, and 15 might. Um, but that's the thing, yeah, does intel uh, I was gonna look at intellect or resolve, if any of these, um, affect conversation options, it would be, it would be good. I can't have, I can't have 16 con, 16 decks, and 15 might, okay, you I only had 15 points. But does, does, does this stuff affect any dialogue options? 10's pretty low, <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> uh... It is, actually, because it doesn't have any... There we go. Yeah! Ten is base, right? So I, I'm gonna at least get us out of the ten range. So we can have... Some of these things. Okay, uh, I'm gonna just go with this, I can we can always go back. It's whatever. <gasps> Culture! Okay. Aider Empire is currently the largest and most powerful force in the part of the world. Centered around the equator. It has a tropical climate. The, the Empire has colonies in numerous areas in the world. Greater Aider is its heart and houses the majority of its human and elven nations. Deadfire Archipelago. Okay, good. Our outfit's changing. Consisting of the nation of Nashtak. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Dozens of Almala settlements and hundreds of lawless... Oh, this will change my stats? Oh, it will. It will. I see what it does. Uh, Pirate infested islands. It's home to boreal dwarves, a Mawa, and a mixed variety of other races. It's the last stop for anybody headed east. A multitude of monstrous sea creatures infest the ocean beyond, making travel virtually impossible. Ixmatil Plains. <gasps> oh, I love this outfit! Located on the northeast of Ir Glanfath. Um... The extent of planes are a lot. I can't, I can't live somewhere that I can't pronounce. They're fertile savannas. It's one of the oldest in the world. The one of the least imperialistic, having spread out little over the past thousands of years. Uh, oh, you get, you get unique dialogue if you make your character. <gasps> I love this robe! Once the crown jewel of the southern seas, Ovalia is now crumbled remains of an empire warring with, of warring merchant nations. Counting many humans and dwarves among the ranks, the old Valian countries are still forces to be reckoned with and are proud of their rich cultural heritage. I want it just for the outfit. Ooh! Dominated by the Almao nation of Ratawe, the gulf itself is host to a number of nations, most of them Almao or Lanner Dwarven. Though these countries are relatively young, they are some of the most advanced colonial settlements of the, in the East. The Gulf is a land of riches and resources for those who can take them. It's often pummeled by a violent storm. Um, so yeah, basically the Orlai, I did, like, Lemonzy was so right. Like, we didn't pick the elf one, but we, we just basically picked between the Dragon Age, um, the Dragon Age city and, uh, Dalish elf. Ah, blah. Living Lands is the mountainous region of the large northern island renowned for its diversity of plant and animal life. Ah! The weather is unpredictable and the ecosystems vary dramatically from valley to valley. The Living Lands are home to an assortment of races and a variety of colonial and independent settlements. The white that wins. Oh, look, Levity! We can have we can have a crop top without being a fighter. A large crack southern expanse of polar ice. The white that wins is home to pale elves and small colonies of daring explorers, outcasts, and adventurers. While virtually no plant life grows in the white, it is home to many hardy species of dangerous animals that forage from the sea or prey upon each other to survive. Oh man, I don't know. I like the white that wins. If we're going outfit, my favorite is old Valia, but I don't really like the, um, the background for it. It's like, whatever. I like the Ratawi. Um... Uh, Deadfire Archipelago. 
I really like that outfit too, but I don't like the background. No, you wouldn't get- Okay, okay, okay. Here's the Aider. We're not being an Aider. It's like boring. Here's the Dead Fire Archipelago. But it's not so much the outfits we're worried about. It, we're worried about the background. So this is this is where the Nastak are. Old Valia is a minor character Jedi from the Bad Star. Really? Is it really? Or, or are you making that up? <laughs> so we could live uh, where there's dozens of Almala settlements and lawless pirate-infested islands. Lots of lots of oceany things. This is the plains, just kind of boring, but they have a pretty outfit. I like the simple robe, but Ovalia is boring. Ratawi is another gulf area. Uh, the entire coat. And I, I do like that outfit. Living lands is cool, but it's meh. or the white that wins. So okay, so then okay, so perception. Or dexterity, which I do need. I do like the idea of the pirates, right? Oh, it's, okay, that's what it looks like. So, okay, and resolve. We don't really need intellect. We don't need. So, we could do constitution of the Rotau. Um, But look, I, I could have a crop top. Nah. Hmm. This is also an area where it's more likely that an Orlan would live. Hmm. Maybe we'll do the Dead Fire Archipelago. Yeah, we'll go with the Dead Fire Archipelago. <laughs> Let me see pirates! Okay, we'll go with that. And then. <gasps> oh my gosh, we can choose more background stuff! Okay, aristocrat, you've lived your life amongst the nobility. Your days have been marked by lavish meals and extravagant parties. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's, it's a plus two lore, though. No, pirates try to pick on nerdy monks, but, they, but the nerdy monks kick the pirates' butts. Ha <laughs> ha Okay, ex we'll probably go <gasps> explorer, drifter, eh, or we could be a raider. Can you find the siren call of the horizon irresistible? You cannot help but wonder what lies beyond the next hill or wave, and you've built your life around finding out. Plus lore and survival. Okay, a laborer, blah. Uh, been spent in this. Oh, okay, it's not like a bad laborer, but like a crafter. That's cool. Yar, matey. I uh, I actually would really love to play a game like World of Warcraft or Guild Wars 2, where it actually, like, lets you be whatever you want to be. Like, lets you sh set up shop in-game and craft items and sell them. Like, I would literally love to get, like, a big RPG game like that and have it be like, you can be a warrior or a merchant or a crafter, and you literally can't. Like, I'd love to be a crafter. Arr! A pirate monk! Arr, me hearties! Now let us meditate! <laughs> Meditating pirates! Uh, your girlfriend would love chat because of all the pirates or the D&D? <laughs> you hope... Okay, apply my trade. Merchant, you've traded goods. Blah, blah, blah. Slave. I've never known freedom... If we were a hearth one, we could be a hearth one. You never quite fit no matter where you go. Each town, new town is just a place to ref, rest before briefly moving rest briefly before moving on to the next. You're more comfortable on the road, traveling the world. So stealth and mechanics. Hunter. You live for the thrill of the chase. Oh, she loves pirates. Mercenary. Bat blade and battle is your way of life. You solve your problems by pulling out your weapon and applying force. Did he get a lore, too? Interesting. Raider. You spent your life on the wrong side of the law. What you want, you take, and what was theirs is a tendency to become yours. <laughs> Stealth and athletics. Uh, this tiring work in addition to the hazards of mortal combat. Adventurers have walls to climb, rivers to cross, and pits to leave over once per encounter. Characters with athletics can use second wind ability to recover lost endurance. Oh, interesting. You use automatically whenever the characters in scouting mode. 
I'm taking another bite of food. <laughs> I'm gonna choke. <laughs> we'll be commandeering your shit. We'll be commandeering your shit. <laughs> you nerds. So we'll be sure to get it back to you. <laughs> Bisexual. I mean, yeah, we have the um, we have the very vivid example of um, Isabella from uh, Dragon Age, and that's all the example I need. 